Alright, back to the general. So as some of you may know, and as I've mentioned in a previous video of mine, one game that's being developed as we speak is called Renegade Line. Its developers came from the community of Battlefield Heroes in which they thought wasn't adequate. The developers of Battlefield Heroes weren't doing their job properly, they weren't really keeping the game afloat, it had always been a pay to win thing, the game was just dying off. So this group of developers decided to make their own game, heavily inspired from Battlefield Heroes, and that game so happens to be Renegade Line. As far as I know, Renegade Line's development and conception started in the first quarter of 2014. We're now nearing the end of the first quarter of 2016, and we have a couple gameplay screenshots, the forums are now out, we have a gameplay video, a couple videos on some of the objects found in the game, but there's still no real alpha date, beta date, or release date set. The developers have said that they want the game to be available this year, but there's no real clues as to when that's going to be. The Renegade line team is small and amateur. For example, there's only one animator on the Raw Vengeance team. I'm not saying it's impossible for a small team to develop a really good game, but I am saying that such a small team is going to mean that the game is going to have limitations in terms of development, time of release, and overall quality. And now with the ever-growing interest of World War II based shooters, because of the oversaturated modern and futuristic shooter department, Renegade Line has some major competition over its horizon. And while I'm very excited for Renegade Line to finally be released, there are two new games being developed right now that are being heavily funded and look amazing. Battalion 1944 and Days of War are two new first-person World War II shooters set to release very, very soon. Both of these games are being funded by Kickstarter and have reached their very first goals. The gameplay previews and development videos show these games potential for success. Between these two games, the graphics look nice and the gameplay looks fun. These games are a take on the early World War II shooters such as Medal of Honor and the early Call of Duty. The developers have directly stated how they want their game to play out and what the community can do to benefit the game. The developers of Days of War are offering custom map creation by the community and editable rule sets for dedicated server hosts. The developers of Days of War already have an alpha date, beta date, Steam early access, and PC release date set for December 2016, followed by a console release date sometime in 2017. While Battalion 1944's release date is yet to be announced, the game is in full development, has been completely funded, and it shouldn't be long before it's released on Steam and consoles very soon. Days of War is being developed by Driven Arts, while Battalion 1944 is being developed by Bulkhead Interactive. Both said teams are very familiar with the Unreal 4 engine and are using said engine to develop the games. While I'm not sure of the exact size of each team, simply because I cannot find the information on that subject, I'm almost positive that both of these teams are larger and have more experience in the game development field. That being said, it would be unfair to compare both of these teams to Raw Vengeance, simply because of their size and experience in game development. Driven Arts is independent, but but has worked on games such as Dead Island, Batman Arkham, and The Witcher series, while Bulkhead Studios is the combination of Deco Digital and Bevel Studios. Bevel Studios has helped develop games such as Dungeon Siege 3, Dirt 3, Night Squad, Geometry Wars, Scream Ride, Deception, Talos, and many more games, as well as their new game, Panuma, Numa, Breath of Life, which the second half of Bulkhead, Deco Digital, is helping develop. Obviously, with their history of development in these major, major games, again, it would be unfair to compare Raw Vengeance to either of these studios. However, it just goes to show that Raw Vengeance has some very big competition at the moment. The Raw Vengeance team has decided to not be funded by Kickstarter as of right now. There's no word on any Steam Greenlight promotion, and in general, there's no clear development process that has been announced. As far as the current Renegade Line community knows, only a few screenshots and a very safe gameplay video give us details that the game will look and maybe play such as Battlefield Heroes did. I'm sure the Raw Vengeance team is working very hard to publish something they feel is a good game. Rushing the team and pushing development faster is only going to create a less quality game. And while I don't think Renegade Line is as far developed as these two games are, I think services such as Kickstarter and Steam Early Access would definitely help with development and building a larger community around this game. I don't think it would be wise to put the game out on Kickstarter or even Steam Early Access at this point in development, but at some point where the game looks like it will be a success, it would be wise for the game to be funded and promoted by each of these services. Raw Vengeance is offering a truly unique experience in the third person shooter department if they add certain gimmicks that will make it stand out between these two shooters. The fact that the game is third person and has a more cartoony tone already makes it more unique when compared to these two titles. If they can push a truly unique experience and make the game stand out from these two games being developed, Raw Vengeance will truly have something unique on their hands that might attract players from games such as Team Fortress 2, perhaps Loadout, and those who remember Battlefield Heroes or are just looking for something unique. However, Raw Vengeance really needs to get their shit together if I'm being completely honest. The two companies that are developing these new games 
have trailers, kickstarters, gameplay, have outlines of what they're going to do, they have larger teams, they've hired professionals, and their games are looking impressive. I'm not sure for what moral reasons Raw Vengeance is refusing to accept donations, but without some sort of funding, they're putting their product at serious risk of failure when compared with these two games. The concept of a free-to-play shooter that is not pay-to-win, where the only purchasable items are cosmetics, is a great start, but outlines of how the game will play out, development cycle, and how the community can benefit the game will surely push this product as something serious. I don't mean to diminish the hopes of Renegade Line becoming a very good game. It is absolutely possible and I truly believe that Raw Vengeance can do it, but their methods at the moment going about developing this game seem rather faulty and sketchy at best. They need some serious backbone in terms of funding and development that will really set this game apart and really bring it as a product worthy of being played by many many people. Again, I'm very excited for Renegade Line to be developed and it'll truly be a nostalgic experience that is like Battle for the Heroes was, but that being its only gimmick isn't going to get it very far. I'm interested to hear the developers thoughts on this and the community's discussion as well. So let this start the open discussion on this topic and feel free to leave comments below on what you think. Links to everything will be in the description. Thanks for watching.